Today we're going to take a closer look at the upcoming Toucan 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro. We have reviewed many 3D scanners on this channel, but I don't think we ever did one of these. What really grabbed my attention about this device is actually the design, because I'm a fan of this kind of engineering stuff, and this device with a knob on the side really made me want to put my hands on it. This video is sponsored by 3D Maker Pro, so stick till the end with the video to know about an interesting offer made available through our channel. This review copy was provided by 3D Maker Pro, but everything I'm gonna share here is our own, so you can make a well-informed decision if you ever plan on getting this device. What intrigued me more about the token is that it looks more like a bulky phone than a scanner, and in many ways, it kinda is. This thing packs 8-core CPU, GPU, and 4 cameras, including a 48-megapixel color camera, in addition to a massive 6600 milliamp battery and support for 50 watt fast charging, Wi-Fi 6, and the list goes on. Having a handheld scanner feels good, no data, no power cables, and no PC, just you and the scanner. And did I mention that Toucan comes with its own display? It has a 6 inch high quality AMOLED touchscreen that lets you control the scanner directly, preview scans in real time, and adjust settings without even needing your computer, unless you want to send it to your computer, in which case you will need it. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's take a step back and check what we got in the package. Here's what I got. A tripod, a handle, a turntable, a couple of adapters for the charger, and then there's the box. Oh, what's in the box? Inside the box, you got a charger, the charger cable, and of course the scanner itself, along with a bunch of scan markers. The scanner is fully metallic, and it has this minimalistic design with only two buttons and a knob on the side. It rocks a 6-inch high-quality AMOLED screen, but I'm not sure about the refresh rate, probably a standard 60Hz. And since we are on the subject, the token comes with a built-in 256GB of storage, a 6600mAh battery, and can scan up to 15 frames per second. The scan resolution goes down to 0.05mm in near mode and 0.1mm in far mode. It weighs 735 grams, with dimensions of 200 millimeters in length and 93 millimeters in width, and it also offers a maximum scan volume of 4,000 millimeters, which is kind of big. For connectivity, it supports Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 4.1, and uses a USB-C interface. This is the hardware side. So what about the software side of things? Well, as you might have guessed, the Toucan runs a version of GM Studio tailor-made for this handheld device. Here, you can do almost everything as its PC counterpart, picking between different mods, setting up the focus distance, the brightness, everything in real-time feedback from the sensor. As soon as you turn on the device, you're gonna hear the fan start spinning. I hope you like white noise, because it never stops spinning. It does work though, it keeps the device cold under heavy loads. When you hit the new scan button, the laser will start flickering. I should tell you about the epilepsy warning, if you got seizures or you are sensitive to flashing lights, especially in dimly lit environments, but if you are in a well lit environment, you should be fine. From here, you can check your viewfinder to see the scan area in the middle. On the left, you got the camera preview, brightness control, and focus distance, and on the right, you can start adjusting settings or browse previous projects. Most of these controls should be familiar to you if you do a lot of 3D scanning, but let's go through them anyways. The brightness slider will control the exposure, avoid overexposure and underexposure. This will help you get cleaner depth data. You can also use the rotating knob on the side to adjust the brightness. To be honest, I'm kind of disappointed that you can only get to control the brightness with this bad boy. The focal length right under that is to adjust the focus distance, so to prevent any debris or unwanted objects in the vicinity from being scanned, you can adjust the near and far values to crop the background and foreground. On the right is where the main stuff is. The settings you should at least make sure are set correctly. First is capture mode. This determines how the device will capture your scans. You have continuous scan or photograph. If you are planning on doing the scanning while holding the scanner and moving around it, continuous scan is the option you want to click. Otherwise, photograph lets you do more stable scanning with higher accuracy, preferably using the tripod and the turntable. To align your scan, you have several options under Align Mode. Geometry uses the shape and surface features of the object to align each frame as you scan. 
It works best on objects with plenty of edges, curves or details, but it can struggle on smooth or flat objects. Texture uses the color information from the RGB camera to align frames based on visible patterns or markings. It is useful when the object has rich textures or color variation, but it won't work on plain or single colored surfaces. Marker uses reflection markers placed on or around the object to give the scanner fixed reference points. This is the most reliable choice for shiny, smooth or low detail surfaces where geometry or texture might fail. Global Marker is meant for large projects or multi-session scans and it uses the same markers to build a shared reference system so multiple scans can align accurately even if you stop and restart scanning. Below that, you will see a few extra toggles. Dark mode, as the name suggests, is meant for scanning dark or low reflectivity objects. It enhances laser sensitivity to improve data capture on challenging surfaces. Capture Texture Picture lets the scanner capture full color textures along with the geometry, but it increases file size and compressing time, so only turn it on when you need color. Switch Large Picture is meant for scanning larger objects, giving you a wider capture area per frame, but it can slightly reduce detail. The device is able to keep track of the scan, which I might add is super stable. Unlike previous versions, this one does not lose track of the scan easily, and even if it does, it can pick it up from where it stopped. 3D Maker Pro has been posting on their Instagram, teasing the release of the new scanner. In one post, they showcased the near detail mode and the far fast mode, and I wanted to try that test with the same model using the two modes. I don't have a tree lock, but I will be using this figurine right here. Showcasing the scanner, I wanted to replicate this test with fast mode and ultra detail mode on the same model. After the scan finishes, you can use the built-in editing tool to quickly clean things up. This lets you crop out any junk geometry that isn't part of the model. You can do this with either the lasso or the brush tool, both available from the icons on the left side of the screen. For anything more advanced, like merging scans, filling holes, or heavy post-processing, you will need to send the project over to your computer, which we'll get into in a moment. But first, let me talk about pricing. As for the pricing side of things, the Toucan 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro comes in at $19.99. While $19.99 isn't exactly cheap, it offers high detail and fully untethered scanning in one package, which gives it a solid value for its class. There is also a limited time per order price of $9.99. On top of that for you guys, if you use the code INST50 at checkout, you will get $50 off the purchase on top of the early bird price. So yeah, I'm gonna showcase a few tests with the scanner. I tried multiple modes and different alignment features, even using markers, and I think the results speak for themselves. You can also send your models into JM Studio on your PC over a wireless connection, as long as your scanner and computer are on the same network. All you need to do is go to the scanner, click the three dots above any one of your scans and choose export to PC. Then on your PC inside JM Studio, pick import from mobile, copy the IP address shown on your PC and type it into the scanner to start the transfer. Now, if you prefer using the Type-C connector, you can definitely do that as well. From there, you can do tons of post-processing in JM Studio. Things like cleaning up the raw scan, removing noise, filtering holes, and trimming unwanted parts. You can also align and merge multiple scans into one mesh, decimate the mesh to lower poly count, generate weightless surfaces, and even bake color textures onto the model. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in the Toucan 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.